James Matthews was a writer. Not just any writer, though. He was a rebel. He used his words to fight against injustice. In a time when silence was the norm, Matthews chose to speak out. Matthews was born in South Africa, a land of breathtaking beauty but also deep-seated inequality. Apartheid was the law of the land, a brutal system of racial segregation and discrimination. This system treated black people terribly. It was wrong. Matthews knew it. He saw the pain and suffering it caused every day. He decided to do something about it. He couldn't stand by and watch his people suffer. He wrote. He poured his heart and soul into his words. Matthew's words were powerful. They resonated with the oppressed and the marginalized. He wrote poems and stories. Each piece was a reflection of the harsh realities of apartheid. They showed the ugliness of apartheid. His words painted vivid pictures of the injustices faced by black South Africans. He wrote about the pain it caused, the heartbreak of families torn apart, the daily indignities suffered. He wrote about the anger it fueled, the simmering rage of a people oppressed for too long. His words gave hope to people. They were a beacon of light in the darkness. People who felt voiceless finally had someone speaking for them. Matthews became their voice. He articulated their struggles and dreams. He became a symbol of resistance. His courage inspired others to stand up and fight. His pen was his weapon. He used it skillfully. Every word was a strike against the oppressive regime. He exposed the truth about apartheid. He laid bare the cruelty and inhumanity of the system. He inspired others to fight back. His words were a call to action, a rallying cry for justice. James Matthews was a true South African hero. His legacy lives on in the hearts of those he touched. He used his words to change the world. His pen was mightier than the sword, and his impact will be felt for generations to come. James Matthews was born in a colorful part of Cape Town. This area was known for its vibrant energy and diverse community. It was called District Six, a place where the streets were always alive with the sounds of laughter, music, and the chatter of people from all walks of life. It was a vibrant place. The markets were always bustling with activity, and the aroma of different cuisines filled the air. People from different cultures lived together. It was a melting pot of traditions, languages, and customs. There were Muslims, Christians, and people of other faiths. They coexisted peacefully, celebrating each other's festivals and traditions. They all called District Six home. It was a place where everyone felt a sense of belonging, regardless of their background. Then came apartheid. A dark cloud that loomed over the nation, threatening to tear apart the very fabric of this harmonious community. This system was all about segregation. It aimed to divide people based on their race, creating a society built on inequality and discrimination. The government wanted to separate people based on their race. They introduced laws that dictated where people could live, work, and even whom they could marry. They said it was to keep things organized. But in reality, it was a means to oppress and control the non-white population. But it was really about control. It was about power. The white minority wanted to maintain their dominance over the majority. The white minority wanted to stay in power. They were determined to enforce their rule, no matter the cost. They were willing to do terrible things to make that happen. Families were torn apart and communities were destroyed. District Six was torn apart because of apartheid. The government saw this vibrant community as a threat to their vision of a segregated society. The government decided it was a whites-only area. They issued eviction notices, and the demolition of homes began. They forced families out of their homes, homes that had been in their families for generations, filled with memories and history, homes they had lived in for generations. The elderly who had seen their children and grandchildren grow up in these homes were now being forced to leave. It was a heartbreaking time. The sense of loss and despair was palpable as families were uprooted from the only place they had ever known. James Matthews saw it all happen. As a young man, he witnessed the destruction of his community and the pain it caused. He saw the pain in his community. The anguish of his neighbors, friends, and family left a deep mark on him. He felt the injustice deeply. The unfairness of it all fueled a fire within him. A desire to fight back against the oppressive regime. These experiences stayed with him. They shaped his worldview. He channeled his anger and pain into activism, using his voice to speak out against apartheid. They made him want to fight back. He became a prominent figure in the resistance, determined to see justice and equality for all. James Matthews started writing early in his life. 
He wrote short stories. He used his words to describe the world around him. He wrote about the people he knew. He wrote about the struggles they faced. Then something changed. Matthews discovered poetry. It was a different way to use language. It was more powerful. Poetry allowed him to express his emotions more deeply. It allowed him to be more creative with his words. Matthews' poetry resonated with people. It spoke to their experiences. It gave them a voice. It made them feel seen and heard. His poetry became a weapon against apartheid. It became a tool for resistance. He used it to challenge the system. He used it to expose its injustices. Section 4. Cry Rage, a poetic indictment of apartheid. Cry Rage was one of Matthews' most famous works. It was a collection of poems. These poems were powerful. They were angry. They were full of pain. They captured the brutality of apartheid. Matthews didn't hold back in Cry Rage. He wrote about the daily struggles of black people. He wrote about their anger and frustration. He wrote about their dreams of a better future. The poems in Cry Rage were not just words on a page. They were cries for help. They were calls to action. People responded to Cry Rage. They read it in secret. They shared it with each other. The book was banned by the government. They knew how powerful it was. They were afraid of its message. Section 5. Beyond Politics, Exploring Themes of Love, Loss, and Daily Life. James Matthews wasn't just a political writer. He was a multifaceted artist whose work transcended the boundaries of political discourse. His writings delved deep into the human condition, exploring the intricate emotions and experiences that define our lives. He was a keen observer of life. He wrote about love, capturing the tender moments shared between couples and the bonds that hold families together. He wrote about loss, portraying the heart-wrenching pain of separation and the void left by loved ones who have passed away. He wrote about the everyday experiences of ordinary people. From the bustling streets of South African townships to the quiet moments of reflection, Matthew's work painted a vivid picture of daily life. His stories were a mirror reflecting the joys, sorrows and mundane routines that make up our existence. His poems were filled with vivid imagery. Each line was carefully crafted to evoke strong emotions and create lasting impressions. The words danced on the page, bringing to life the scenes and characters he described. He used language to paint pictures in the reader's mind. His mastery of words allowed him to create immersive experiences, transporting readers to different places and times. Whether he was describing the beauty of a sunset or the harsh realities of life in the townships, his writing was always evocative and powerful. He could transport you to another place and time. Through his words, you could walk the streets of South African townships, feel the vibrant energy of community gatherings, and witness the resilience of people facing adversity. You could feel the heat of the South African sun, the scorching rays beating down on the land, the sweat on the brows of those working tirelessly under its glare. Matthew's descriptions were so vivid that you could almost experience the physical sensations he wrote about. You could smell the spices in the air, the rich, aromatic scents wafting through the bustling markets, mingling with the sounds of vendors calling out their wares. His writing captured the sensory experiences of everyday life, making them come alive for the reader. You could hear the laughter of children playing in the streets, their joyous voices echoing through the townships, a testament to the enduring spirit of the community. Matthew's work celebrated these moments of happiness and resilience even in the face of hardship. Matthew's writing was honest and raw. He didn't sugarcoat the realities of life, nor did he shy away from expressing his true feelings. His authenticity resonated with readers, drawing them into his world and making them feel deeply connected to his stories. He didn't shy away from difficult topics. He tackled issues like poverty and inequality head-on, using his platform to shed light on the struggles faced by many in South Africa. His work was a powerful commentary on the social injustices of his time. He wrote about poverty and inequality. His words painted a stark picture of the harsh living conditions in shanty towns, the daily battles for survival, and the systemic barriers that kept people trapped in a cycle of deprivation. He wrote about the struggles of people living in townships. From the lack of basic amenities to the constant threat of violence, Matthew's work highlighted the resilience and strength of those who persevered despite the odds. He gave a voice to the voiceless. Through his writing, he amplified the stories of those who were often overlooked or ignored. His work was a call to action, 
urging readers to recognize and address the injustices